And for the balance of this hour, we're going to have a former Green Party head, uh, former BBC uh, newscaster, sportscaster, former champion goalie, and best-selling author uh, David Icke on with us. And we're going to get into the mass shootings and his take on that. Uh, the government openly using al-Qaeda to attack Libya and Syria, where that's going. Uh, what he makes of the uh, Pope announcing he's going to step down. Those internal battles uh, going on there. The latest on the Jimmy Savelle story tied into the British royal family and reports of pedophilia, a.k.a. like uh, Penn State. Uh, all of that is going to be coming up uh, with our guest today to get his take on things. But if you punch this up for TV viewers, radio listeners can just go to InfoWars.com and we have all this linked. Uh, Wired Magazine, Cosmic Rays offer clue to our universe could be a computer simulation. And recent measurements of cosmic ray particles are correct. Then we may have the first evidence of the universe as we know it is really a giant computer simulation. Humans have explored the laws of our universe for many years. And it's not uncommon to hear people talk about how amazing it is that certain fundamental values are just right for life to exist. Some people have wondered if that's because the whole universe is actually some kind of sandbox simulation. We're merely uh, characters in some cosmic game of sims. If that's true, then there should be a point at which we can bump up against the edges of the simulator, like Jim Carrey's character escaping from the Truman Show. And now a team of physicists think that a particular measurement of some cosmic ray particles might be the first such indication of those edges. The idea that we might be living in an artificial reality constructed by something higher than ourselves has been a recurring philosophical hypothesis for centuries. Plato's allegory of the cave... Uh, and it just goes uh, on breaking down uh, the other uh, people theorizing on a brain vat. These are all variants, the matrix and the red pill. Well, now German scientists have done a big in-depth study. We're going to be giving you more details of and breaking down and are finding this. But, but other scientists are actually finding it when they look at black holes, uh, when uh, they observe things. Uh, when they have a computer observe something, uh, it doesn't change the equation. When a human starts observing it, it changes uh, what's happening with the matter. And I've got some of those studies. I'll show a document cam here uh, for viewers. Um, again, if you're a radio listener, just go to InfoWarsNews.com to watch or PrisonPlanet.tv. We'll get you there. We are living inside a computer simulation. Uh, again, that's the headline out of Discovery. Uh, how to tell whether we're living in a computer simulation. That's out of Slate. Do we live in a computer simulation? Washington.edu. Uh, uh, UW researchers say the idea can be tested. Uh, and it just goes on from there with the researchers at the University of Washington conferring with the University in Bonn, uh, Germany. We got John Rappaport at Infowars.com. Are we all living inside a virtual simulation? We are all artists made in the image of the creator, the great artist. And again, uh, I. I personally think this adds to spiritual understanding, doesn't take away from it. The atheists um, say that the only thing that exists is what they can see in their narrow two-slash three-dimensional system. Even though the science all shows higher dimensions, the mathematics, the equations of top uh, people, of course, throughout uh, the last hundred years, uh, quantum mechanics physicists uh, like Einstein and others, so many of them who were atheists look at the research, look at the evidence, the geneticists, and say something made this and believe in a higher power. Now, again, when the scientists say it looks like a computer simulation, there's a lattice holding it together, uh, conforming it artificially. That doesn't mean there isn't a god or a master creator. That adds to that. Okay, some people are saying, oh, you're trying to tear down religion. Well, religion is, is the way it's set up, as Christ said, are these establishment systems, the Pharisees, others, trying to put themselves up as God, and you've got to go through them instead of getting directly to God. And, and, and this is not a religious show. My point is, we know there's a much wider universe going on, and universes stacked on top of universes, and 600-plus billion uh, galaxies photographed by Hubble alone, which is the equivalent of a toy telescope uh, with what we're going to have soon. It is limitless, but we can we can interface with it. We can imagine it. What we imagine, we've proven we can end up building. And it shows that 
We are made in the image of the creator. We are creators. And the system does everything it can to limit that. And that's what David Icke's been saying for 20 plus years. He said the universe is a computer projection hologram. He's written it in more than 10 books. I've read many of them. And they're using the same terms David is now using. Obviously, they're telling us about this now. They've known for a long time. But David Icke, I wanted to get you on because this just adds more credence uh, to what you've been saying. You've heard my introduction to this. Uh, and we're going to break more of the actual, uh, not, not just this German university, but others confirming this and what this really means. David Icke, thank you for joining us. Uh, hello, Alex. Yeah, it's quite surreal for me, actually, um, uh, in the last uh, six months or so, uh, to um, look at all the things that I've been ridiculed for, dismissed for, including by the uh, much of the uh, uh, alternative media. Yeah, uh, David likes a crazy uh, madman, and he's a diversion, and he's just uh, you know pushing people away in the wrong direction. He's he's a disinformer and all that stuff. And now it's beginning to come out because, and, and I hope that this is um. um uh, 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 something that people will remember when they're worried about what people think of them and whether they should speak their truth uh, knowing they're going to get laughed at or dismissed or whether they should keep their head down and just be good little slaves and good little um, conformers that if you keep speaking your truth if it has any validity it will eventually be shown to be so and, and I, I would start like this Alex what we've got to appreciate to understand the conspiracy, because this is where the conspiracy is coming from. The people at the core of the core of the core, they understand uh, uh, this, and therefore they uh, want to keep this awareness of the reality that we're actually experiencing from the global population, because if we don't know and they do, they are in a fantastic position of manipulating our perception. And that's what it is. Whether it's... Um, um, setting up uh, 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 fake, uh, crazy people going uh, uh, with with guns to to uh, take away and uh, disarm uh, Americans. What is that? That is a manipulation of perception of the population. Guns are dangerous and all that stuff to hide the real reality, which is just a scam to disarm America. So all these buddy uh, 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 people in uniform with uh, fantastic levels of military hardware and weaponry now, and what we call policemen, laughingly, around America, um, can then take over the, 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 the population without any problem whatsoever. It's all about perception, but there is this massive... Um, it, it's multi-layered, but there is this massive uh, manipulation of perception, which is reality itself and i think what we need to first of all start at is what is the universe as we perceive it it is information the universe is information and decoding information and if you take the analogy of a computer when you put information into a computer in the way of a disk or, or, or a you know, data stick, um, what you're putting in there are not pictures and graphics and texts um, coming up on the screen. They're not on that information um, uh, source in that form. They are, they are um, codes. They are... Uh, uh, mathematics and electrical pulses the computer then decodes that into the form that we see on the screen which is all the things that we call the internet and computers we are doing the same through a holographic biological computer of enormous advancement that we call the human body and we are picking up information sources and we in the form of vibrational information waveform information which is then turned by the five senses into electrical information which is communicated to the brain and from that information the brain constructs the reality that we think we're experiencing outside of us but it's actually inside of us uh, uh, in, in the sense that I'm I'm describing now say you had and I'm suggesting very strongly Alex that this is the situation we face say you had a reality where the information source is giving you uh, a certain uh, information from which you are decoding a reality
and it's a reality that is fantastically different to this one. It's, it's about love, it's about the expansion of awareness, knowing that we are infinite consciousness, having an experience, we are not the experience itself. We are not our name, we are not our job, we're not our life story, that is the experience. We are the consciousness having that. The system doesn't want that, because like Bill Hicks said, hey, the guys that say this is all just a ride, we kill those people. Yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's exactly why they do that. They, this is why so-called visionaries have always been dangerous to the prevailing order, no matter what point in what we call history you look at. But say this happened, and I'm suggesting it has happened. If you um, have a computer system and it's giving you a certain reality on the screen, there are people, we know this now, it's a fundamental part of life, who can hack in to that computer and give it a fake uh, information source which the computer then decodes and therefore creates a very different um, reality on the screen. segment long segment coming up we'll get into other issues and news with david i but david going back 20 years ago as i remember i remember first reading one of your books about 17 years ago when i'd first gotten on air and my cousin had read it a year before or so so it was whatever book you'd written 18 years ago i forget the names and i'm like this is far out this is crazy and my cousin's like no no this is really interesting this guy's really interesting so i read it and found it to be interesting I forget which book that is, maybe you can remind me, but you were talking about a three-dimensional, the universe being a hologram, projected, projected by what? Again, this isn't even attacking Christianity or religion from my perspective. This reaffirms my faith because, uh, I mean, this is a giant universe, hundreds of billions of galaxies, and there is this force they're finding in genetics, in the wave theory, in everything that's making the scientists realize this is designed. And now we realize that the establishment knows this. They're trying to keep us from learning that we've been hacked, and they are trying to force the red carpet, the glitz, the glam, the fake culture in on us. They're trying to destroy the family, destroy the individual, destroy the nation state. What are they trying to build because they see us as viruses? David, we, we, you've laid out your theory probably, uh, let's not exaggerate, 40, 50 times on my show graciously. Uh, over the last, I don't know, 12 years or so, we've been talking to each other. Folks know what you've said. They know what the scientists are saying at more and more major universities that have these supercomputers and, and these devices that can measure, you know, literally the ether that the ancients talked about. What is it then? What are they trying to build? What do the controllers want? What are they trying to block us from? Realizing there's a whole universe and they're not God? I mean, what is it? Well, the, the thing is, um, Alex, that the, the next... Uh, step on from what they're discovering is what exactly are they discovering? Um, is it the universe um, as we perceive it or is it the hack? And I would strongly suggest that what science has been um, poking around at and trying to understand and going down cul-de-sacs galore because it won't go where the real information is because the whole foundation of its uh, mainstream science... The universe is the hack. That's what I was saying to the guys the other day, that what they're seeing is the hack. Well, what um, uh, they are uh, identifying is, yes, the hack. And what, what are they going to find um, is that the speed of light is not only not the fastest speed in existence, it's pedestrian compared with what is possible. And that the speed of light is the wall of the hack. And, you know, this is, this is, this is so important if we're going to get anywhere with putting this world right, is actually, wouldn't it be nice if we started to understand what the world is? That would give us a chance, wouldn't it? Let me just put this um, to you. Um, we are receiving, according to mainstream science, about 11 million pieces of what they call impressions, light impressions, information in other words, um, or bodies of information, um, to the eye 
um, 11 million every second. The brain takes 40 of those to construct the reality we think we're experiencing. We can only decode through the, the body in what we call the physical world a unbelievable fraction of what exists even within the electromagnetic spectrum this tiny frequency range called visible light is all we can see and um, outside of that you've got the x-ray level and the infrared level and all the others we can't see those that's how tiny this um, this this frequency and now they've proven the dark matter is. it's gone from theory to pro and now they're learning that nine at seven percent of everything is dark matter what is it well, they call, they call it, it dark matter. I, I just call it the, the invisible and the visible to the conscious mind. And the visible is, it's laughable. It is so tiny, it is laughable. That is the hack. And, and the uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, spectrum and, uh, and within everything within the speed of light, I, I suggest, is the hack. And what all they're doing is um, and, uh, that... that scene from the matrix you played before we 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 came back um it's all around you neil even in the uh, neo even in this very room that is the information source it's everywhere everything we said came true everything we've done has been right okay david ike is our guest he got cut off uh there by that short segment he wants to finish up with his take on what science is going to do as they bump up against uh, what he's saying uh, is the hack, not actually uh, the real reality. Uh, pretty heavy stuff, but look, I find it's healthy to do just to get your mind outside the box. We know the culture's hacked. We know they want us in an artificial reality. They're trying to force us into an even deeper one. Uh, with the virtual realities and the virtual video games and people aren't living in the real world and in denial and 10 hours of TV or video games a day and all the drugs and the chemicals and the food and water. The establishment wants to dumb us down. And, and, and David, humor me because I want your take on this. I want you to answer a question and then get back into the nature of reality. Then I want to get your take on the mass shootings in general, some brief you know, answers about where things are going. Uh, and then also uh, the Pope stepping down. That hadn't happened in 600 years. Uh, what uh, your take uh, is uh, on that, we'll discover that with David Icke of DavidIcke.com. If you just joined us, I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com. Uh, Best-selling author, researcher, uh, you know, trailblazer. You, know, you can't deny so much of what he said has come true, unfortunately. I wish it wasn't the case. David Icke joining us now. People can't deny a lot of what we've talked about has come true. It, it, it's, I, I wish I was wrong. But reality is much more wild than what, what, what we can even perceive. I think that's the bottom line here. But you just heard that clip from The Matrix, uh, I think the second one, where, where Agent Smith uh, is saying humanity is a disease. Do the global controllers want more of us? Or are they really going to try to go to robots because they'll follow orders? But the establishment loves to feed on humans like a predator class they call themselves another species uh, in all of their literature uh, the psychopath class will they actually get rid of us what is their in-game goal if they had their way david and then get back into the nature of reality and then those other subjects well i think in terms of numbers um from a control point of view uh humanity is uh out of control in terms of numbers and they want to bring the numbers down uh, dramatically they, uh, see, th th this is basically, I suggest, what has happened after a quarter of a century of researching this uh, in 50-odd in countries. Um, th what we, the hack is basically a bad copy of the reality we should be experiencing and would be experiencing without the hack. And um, they, they have... I mean, if you look in the ancient world, all over the ancient world, uh, and the Garden of Eden and all that stuff is all symbolically part of this uh, whole story. Uh, and the themes are that the human form was genetically manipulated. I f suggest it was genetically manipulated to tune us into the hack. If you've got a, a, a radio on a certain station, it's getting a certain reality by decoding the frequency of that station and then you hack into that station um, and you change the reality uh, of, um, of of the experience of the reality and to, and to do that you have to get to the, the station dial onto your new hacked frequency that you're imposing that's basically what's happened and um, 
so the process once that was done of of, of a, a, a copy that at the, at the time wasn't a million miles different from the reality it was a copy of that it was a bad copy of it it's like it's like literally like downloading a copy of something on a computer i, I mean we're, we're not talking computers on a desktop we're talking unbelievable levels of uh possibility and uh, awareness to do that but um then over this period since this hack was kicked in they have been slowly slowly now at a very fast rate changing and changing and changing the 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 hack into an even more extreme version which is closer and closer to what they are they being the the the, the entities that have done it and they are incredibly robotic. Um, this, this is what Christianity calls the demons. It's what uh, Islam calls the jinn. It's what the, the ancient uh, Gnostic, Gnostics called the, um, the archons. The different names for it all over the world in different cultures. Same theme, same force we're talking about. It's very robotic. It's very computer-like. And it has no emotion. Now, what I'm describing here are the bloodlines that are, are, are being identified in in the hack the the rockefellers the rothschilds the royal families and all these people they are representatives they are if you like the ancient agent smiths of of this these hack creators within the hack to manipulate on their behalf they're middlemen and women uh manipulating within the hack and th the idea is to move us and the hack closer and closer and closer to uh, what they are computer like robots and um, transhumanism which is to introduce more and more technology in the body so we're part robot part human is all part of this uh, story because it's making us more and more and more like they are they do not have what I call creative imagination. Humans have it, they do not have it for reasons I talk about at length in my books. And thus, they, have, they are feeding and manipulating human creativity to create our own prison. They are parasites. Thus, what is the banking system, which is their banking system? It's parasitic. What is the corporation network, which is their corporation network? Parasitic. What are the royal families? Parasitic. What are the governments? Parasitic. And they're all expressions of this force, because these agent smiths, if you like, have taken over government. They've taken over corporations. In fact, they created them. They've taken over the, the medical system, which is why alternative sources of health are suppressed and, and, and practitioners targeted. Uh, this is why they're filling us with vaccines and, and, and rubbish and, and chemical toxins in the food and in the drink and in the water. It's all connected. It's suppressing human potential down to them because if you are one-eyed and you want to control two-eyed, you have got to make the two-eyed blind. And that is what is going on, multi-level, constantly, 24-7, to make humans blind. So in the, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man, these, uh, the, this force is, is king. And Alex, on your show every day, you are presenting stories of the multi-level um, expressions of what I've just talked about. Dumbing down, dumbing down, dumbing down. Education, dumbing down. Why? Because they do not want a clear thinking, sharp, open-minded, expanded awareness that is going to see the game for what it is. And I have to say this too. I mean, this might upset a few people. I really don't care. I'm not here to win a popularity contest. I want humanity to be free. At last, at last. 11 million pieces of information received through the, to the brain every second. We process 40. Infinite reality, we see a tiny, tiny, tiny frequency range called visible light that's almost not, uh, 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 non-existent. Don't anyone tell me that you are going to get the, the, the lowdown on yourself, your reality, your world, and what's going into it, uh, in on it, uh, inside it, from one book, 
whether it's the Bible, whether it's the Koran, whether it's uh, uh, what, what any other religion follows, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get it by uh, understanding or following republicanism or or the Democrats. You're not going to get it from your cultural beliefs, from your academic beliefs, from your racial beliefs. These are all divide and rule mechanisms within the hack to keep the target population at war with itself and in mind prisons that it will not leave because if I take this information as being possible, it's not what's in the book, it's not what's in my belief system. And this is the key. Belief systems are the currency of control. Absolutely the bottom line. If they can get people to believe something rigidly and immovably, they put them in a box and they're not coming out until they decide to look at the world dispassionately and take information on the basis of its credibility and not on the basis of whether it fits in with a belief system. This is why they don't care if you're a rigid believer in this religion or that religion or this politics or that politics or you're an atheist. They don't care. As long as you've got a rigid belief, they have got you. And I tell you, we are at a point now, uh, people of the world, where we have got to open our minds to see what's going on. Because if we don't, there are no answers. There are no answers to the hack within the hack. There are answers to the hack when we expand our awareness to go beyond it in terms of our perception of reality. David Icke is our guest. Um Filmmaker, best-selling author, researcher, uh, former BBC News presenter, uh, sports uh, goalie, champion goalie. If you just joined us, again, I'm Alex Jones, your host. Uh, David, you know, time always flies when you're here with us. Let me just calmly lay this out and then get your take on this and then shift into other subjects. Because I know you've been up since 5 a.m. and you're writing your new book. and You've got to leave sooner. I'll keep you in the next hour. Maybe we'll twist your arm to do that. But the point is... Uh, I've read what Ray Kurzweil said. I've read what the other transhumanists have said. I know the whole history of them, how they come out of the end of eugenics in the early 50s, out of the eugenics society. Uh, Aldous Huxley's brother, Julian Huxley, starts the transhumanist movement. They're not saying humans are going to merge with computers by itself. They're saying we've taken control of human evolution, to use their words, whether people believe in that or not. We've taken control, and we're going to empower you, but we're going to squash everybody else like bugs. You will accept this or die, and you'll be like a bug as soon as we get this brain boost. But then I see every piece of tech they roll out is designed to dehumanize, not to empower. So I'm not against the technology. The fact it's all infected. It's all deformed. It's all designed to poison and limit from the smart meters to the phones to all of it. We can obviously hack the Matrix back ourselves and use that to reach people in the Matrix, to use the movie analogy. But people need to understand, if they haven't read the writings of all the top transhumanists, they're selling the new liberation through this, but saying all the rest of us will be animals who are exterminated because we won't, we'll be like bugs. This is Hitlerian rolled out with these big conferences with top military, top Hollywood, William Shatner, who I don't think is a bad guy, goes to it. And they have these big Kurzweil events where they're going to be gods and we're, we, we won't even count and, and, and we're going to accept it or we won't even be able to communicate. When meanwhile, it's all done when you read deeper to actually destroy us and enslave us. I mean, this is beyond science fiction what the technocratic elite, and I've studied them. If you go back to the 1850s with Galton and Wedgwood and the Huxleys all intermarrying with the British royalty, they all envisioned, we're going to have the genetics, we're going to discover that, the biometrics, the control grid. They chart 165 years ago, about 1850 or so, everything that would then unfold in books I own, that is not human. They are, I mean, they talk about demons, whatever. They are channeling and building something so dark, it, it, it staggers the mind. And, and so I want listeners to know, as wild as what David Icke is saying, these people believe it and talk about it, and they believe they're going to be the new gods of the future, and they want to shudder our consciousness. Alex, um, you, you used a uh, term there which uh, really sums up the the game dehumanize uh, i was just saying a few minutes ago the idea is to turn us into computer like uh, robot like um emotionless uh expressions of them and to do that they must dehumanize us 
And, you know, there are certain key words that can be, um, uh, just a few key words that can be used to describe this force that I'm talking about. One, it's a parasite. That's why everything it does is parasiting. You know, the tax system and all these fines and all these uh, new regulations and stuff that they're bringing in, that is, that is just increasing the parasitical nature of the society and those that are controlling society. Another key word um, is deceit, that goes without saying, and another one is distort, distortion. Everything is about distorting reality. Why? Because what they're doing that is distorting the original reality and distorting it to become closer to their That's reality. That's why the propaganda doesn't make any sense because the elite, so-called elite, are insane and ugly in their in their souls and their spirits and and that's why they're turning up the taxes and regulations in their own words to wreck us and to bankrupt us to drive us into their arms so we can now be under their control. Exactly. That's exactly what they're doing. And um, th th this is, you know, I've been talking about this in my books for a very long time. All this, this financial crash, if people are going to sit around waiting for the upturn, well, you know, I, 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 sh I should get some food in because you've got a long wait because the idea is not to upturn it. The idea now is to drive it on and on and on. Um, in t so the humans are, are driven e economically into the ground. I mean, look around the world. Look around America. What's happening? My goodness. Uh, uh, and, and you said uh, that in 2008. You said we're not coming out of this until we defeat them. This is the long, dark winter. This is the shutdown while they give us false hope and pose as saviors. Yeah, we see this is another thing. Oh, go on, you know, we talk forever. Another one of their great techniques is buying time. You know, look at the Palestinians in, uh, in, in Israel. All these roadmaps and talks about talks and all that stuff, load of rubbish. The Israelis don't want any of that to come to fruition. They're buying time to complete the genocide. And so they'll buy time. Oh, oh no, the, the upturn's coming. Oh, it's just around the corner. No, a, a key, no need to do anything. We've got it sorted. And it's just buying time to allow it to, to get worse. And, and when you talk but about... But even that's a divide and conquer as well. With the Globalists are playing both sides of that. Yeah, they have to divide and rule seven billion when there's a handful of them in full knowledge of what they're doing. That's the key. This is why I say, you know, I don't care what your religion is or no religion. I don't care what, what your belief system is. Um, I, I, let's just put it aside and come together because we're all in this together. And let's, let's if you want to argue about be belief systems, let's argue in the concentration camp, shall we? That'll be a good time. We'll have plenty of time. Well, not too long, but we'll have enough time to see if your belief system's better than mine. Come on, people. It's time to grow up because they want us to be children. In the worst Look at how they're hyping black on white, white on black racism all in the media. I mean, they are desperately hitting the divide and conquer button like I've never seen. Yes, exactly, because they're, 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 they're pushing on now to, to complete the job. David Ike, even though it's uh, late over there, is going to be with us about 20 minutes uh, into the next hour. We're going to get into some of the uh, things politically that are happening, get his take on that. And then I'll take calls and cover news for the balance of the uh, rest of the hour. For those that are holding, a few of the callers got through are for David. We may have time to actually get to a few of those here in about 15 minutes. This is a short segment, then one more little short segment, then a longer segment with David. Briefly, this broadcast is listener-supported. And when you buy the books, the videos, like Behold a Pale Horse, America's Last Chance with Charlie Daniels at InfoWarsStore.com, or A Noble Lie Exposing Oklahoma City as an Inside Job by the Clintons, uh, absolute trash, a very powerful film, uh, you support the broadcast. When you buy the Come and Take It t-shirts, the new Obama Joker t-shirt that uh, pulls down that idol, uh, you support the broadcast, and the magazines are sold in bulk in groups of 10 up to 100 at cost. Big, glossy, color magazines, just full of hardcore info. Buy them, given everybody you know uh, this issue. I've hardly plugged it, and it's almost sold out. Why the Tyrants Want Your Guns is on the cover, and it's got all 50 states making up a handgun. Uh, InfoWars Magazine, or subscribe and get the next 12 issues, this one and the next 12, delivered to your house, or give it as a gift subscription. Great way to wake somebody up. As everything goes digital, physical is what we're going to get back into to really reach out. And people are really waking up. And I want to thank all of you that are subscribers uh, there at PrisonPlanet.tv to watch the nightly news and see the daily show. Uh, and also people that are subscribers to InfoWars Magazine. Get your February issue today at InfoWars Store.com. David, this is a short segment. 
uh, DavidIke.com. You've got a new book you're writing. I want to have you back on when that comes out. You wanted to comment on Huxley and uh, people, uh, n not, not the Huxley we know of in this 20th century with Brave New World in 32, but his grandfather. How did they envision genetic engineering, total control, robots under their control 160 years ago? Well, um, it, it, it comes through to Aldous Suxley as, as well with Brave New World, yes. who, who uh, of course, was connected into the Fabian Society, uh, a major secret society with a network. And that's where George Orwell, Eric Blair, his real name, got uh, his information for 1984. The, the, from, from the perspective that I'm coming from, um, Alex, it's really, really simple. Um, those that are the Agent Smiths, if you like, and the Huxleys that certainly were, um, they are coming, and the royal family, and the royal families, and the, the, the Rockefellers, and the Rothschilds, they're coming from a different point of uh, perception for this reason. Imagine that you're playing a computer game, and you know where the computer game goes because you've seen it. You, you know where it goes. Or you're watching a movie, and you know where it goes. You know how the plot unfolds and where it ends. But the people in the movie, i.e. the human race, they ain't seen the movie. They think the movie's real. They think things are happening by random chance, when actually it's unfolding because it's programmed to unfold that way. That's what's happening with the hack. Now, we as a human race, if we get out of uh, our uh, five sense level of reality, which is very uh, uh, weak uh, comparatively in changing reality and get into awareness consciousness and realize the true nature of who we are and we do that collectively then it's over it's over pro pure is introducing pro one all of your filtration in one system portable on the go this is the pro one by pro pure you wanted it you got it no more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. David, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. David Icke, our guest of DavidIcke.com. Uh, David, in the time we've got, what's going on with the Pope? I mean, we've got Wall Street Journal saying prophecy is the next pope, the last, and all sorts of other hysteria. What's going on here? Well, I think there's a very good chance, Alex, that um, the uh, Roman Church will, will not last uh, a desperately long time now because um, the Roman Church has not just got skeletons in the cupboard, it's got whole cemeteries uh, going back um, hundreds of years. And you know, there's a, a television program, I think, when going out tonight in America or, or going out, we watched it online uh, last night. You can watch it online anywhere in the world. And um, its uh, English title, if you like, is um, uh, Silence uh, in the House of God. And uh, it just confirms 
uh, in a mainstream uh, documentary, what I've discovered all around the world in the last uh, 20, nearly 25 years, and that is the scale of paedophilia and child abuse. There's a reason for that. It connects into the hack. It connects into the uh, energy vampiring of those behind the hack. This is all part of it. Children's energy. They want. And why are they saying vampires are good everywhere? Children yeah, shows. Well, yeah, exa exactly, Alex. What, what what they're doing is trying to get us closer and closer to them, so um, their extremes become. Uh, mainstream and acceptable to us more Torture, and more. secret all. arrest, Hotel yeah. Transylvania, the yeah, vampires are the sweet ones, the humans are the bad ones. That's all part of the um, that's all part of the, the 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 preparation and the conditioning to to get us to accept um, extremes and outrages as as a, a natural part of life. But um, what um, surrounds this resignation of the Pope, I would suggest, is that Joseph uh, Ratzinger is. Uh, real name, um, is the biggest child abuse uh, cover-upper, if you like, cover-upper of uh, child abuse um, on the planet. Um, in 1981, uh, Pope John Paul II, who was not the rose-colored person he was painted and promoted as, he um, made uh, Ratzinger the head of something called the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, the CDF. Now, this was formerly the Supreme Sacred Congregation of the Roman and Universal Inquisition. It was the Holy Inquisition, um, the mass murdering, torturing of non-believers. Um, and in 2001, uh, the same Pope, Pope John Paul II, decreed that all child abuse cases affecting the Roman Catholic Church worldwide would come through this CDF and directly through Ratzinger, every single one, and the job uh, of Ratzinger, which he carried out with, with, with great aplomb and uh, vigorously, um, was to cover up as much as possible um, and therefore stop what would be and will be, I, I suggest, when it does come out, church destroying uh, uh, truth about the child abuse and the scale of it worldwide. And in covering it up, Alex, he um, denied justice to the children who'd been abused and allowed paedophile priests and bishops and all the rest of it to stay in their jobs um, or maybe move, move parishes or whatever, but stay in their jobs and continue to abuse children. All right, it's our final segment with David Icke. We may cram in a call or two from him from folks like William. I am Alex Jones, your host. A ton of news and your calls coming up after he leaves us. David, we got to move quickly now. If people just joined us, you're saying it's television programs set to air here and in England, and you gave the name of them, and I pulled up the London Guardian uh, with the reports that he was over the committee uh, that helped suppress the child abuse back in the uh, 80s and things. Uh, and now he's resigned. It's a huge deal. The media is acting like they don't know why he resigned. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, uh, uh, you know, popes don't resign, Alex. He's the first one to resign in 600 years. They're saying ill health, but they're very vague about what that ill health is. And, and, and his, his, his previous uh, uh, mate, uh, Pope John Paul uh, II, um, he stayed uh, as pope for, uh, for the last four years of his life with Parkinson's disease, severe arthritis. He could hardly speak or hear, but he it kept going because popes don't resign. Now this one has suddenly resigned. I'm telling you, it's to do with the scale of child abuse that this man has been covering up for year after year after year. The bubble's about to burst, and and you know, it, 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 on so many levels, the bubble's sure. about to burst. Sure, let's you move quick now, though. Uh, yeah, you mentioned you mentioned Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile, uh, the whole thing in this country, uh, a thing called Operation U Tree with the Metropolitan Police in London. That's just been a massive cover up of of his connections with the royal family and, and the Thatcher administration. But there are other things going on um, that are connecting more and more dots and more and more um, uh, uh, connections into the uh, paedophilia connections into the Thatcher administration, uh, which was a cesspit, a cesspool beyond description. And, and that's going to blow eventually as well. And, and I've said for all these years, Pedophilia and Satanism are the cement that holds the whole thing together you worldwide. You said not only was he a pedophile before it came out, but he was a Satanist. Now that's mainstream news of him taking little kids to Satanic rituals and raping them. 
Yeah, I also said that he was a necrophiliac, which has also uh, come out as well. And what is a necrophiliac? There's someone that wants uh, uh, sex with dead people. It's about death. And again, you, you heard that when you were working at the BBC? No, no, this, this was much later. I, I um, met a lady. That's right, in, she came uh, and visited you. But, of course, you were a top news presenter there for folks that don't yeah, know. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know Savo. I mean, you know, the BBC is a massive organization. I was in Sport and News, and he was in wherever he was. But um, I always thought it was a very strange man. Any, anyone, you know, that looked... That that, that saw him on television. This was this was one strange. He uh, looks like the archetypal pervert trying to rape kids in the uh, in the trench coat at the park. Yeah, but I, I met a lady in the late 1990s um, who was a close friend of Princess Diana for nine years, um, and she gave me the lowdown on everything, uh, including Savile, because Savile was so close. I mean, she she said, you know, Princess Diana, you know, just uh, uh, kind of uh, hated the guy, um, Savile, because he, he was so close to the royal family, Alex, that this has now uh, uh, come out, that he was acting as a go-between Prince Charles and Princess Diana. He was a top liaison. He was the one that had the keys to all their palaces and the highest yeah. level security clearance above anybody and bragged, I supply things to them. Uh, and they're constantly digging up the skeletons of little kids on royal palaces. What's going on there? The thing is that, you see, you know, I've, we've been talking in this uh, chat about the if you like, the Agent Smiths being living in one world and the population living in another world, and the, the two interact, but that's, uh, that's about it. No, um, they see our kids like going to the store and getting a pizza. I mean, they're, they're eating us. We are the food. Well, yeah, because they they see us they see us like like humans see uh, you know cattle and stuff like that. Um, but the thing is that um, the life that they lead is so extreme it's so dark it's so based on okay here's an example i remember you in a book i forget which one saying al gore carries giant packages of blood around with him everywhere and i thought that's it this guy's crazy it's where the internet got really big it's about 95 96 years later i saw it in the news that why does al gore insist on having all these blood types in a refrigerator that follows him everywhere he goes not even his own blood and they said we don't know he won't say what is al gore doing with the with the uh, refrigerator of blood well the thing is that these um these bloodlines are for 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 the you know, way it's gone today, let's call them the Agent uh, Smith bloodlines, um, they are uh, only uh, partly human. They, they also are partly these entities, demons, jinn, archons, whatever you want to call them. Um, and therefore, they, they are hybrids. And to hold their human form within the hack, you know, because it's a hologram. It's not, it's not a physical body. Physical bodies can't, you know, shift shape, but holograms can. This is why we need to understand reality to get a real grasp on what, we're, what is happening all around us. And, and to hold um, human form, they do drink uh, blood. It's not the only reason, but because the, it carries the human genetic code. And, and it, human code in their DNA open, whereas otherwise, um, you know, they would look very different. And this is what shapeshifting is about. You see, people laugh at shapeshifting because, we're, we're, and this is an age-old thing. It's not just modern experience. This goes back as far as you know, history goes back, this, this theme of shapeshifting. Um, we th dismiss it, or you people dismiss it, because they say you can't go from a physical body to a physical body. No, you can't. But that's not what's happening. You see, everything is energy, waveform energy, including, including the human body. It only becomes what we call physical when we've decoded it from the waveform through to the electrical into the holographic. Okay, well, regardless, they think all this is going on. They are a bunch of Luciferian devil worshippers. They're, they're skull and bones, you name it, out of their minds. Let me ask you this. we got to move quick here, David. You've always talked about how these sporting events, these big ones, are religious events. Now, the last four or five Super Bowls, uh, with Janet Jackson and the sun symbol on her breast and the lights going out this year for 33 minutes and 55 seconds right after she does the Illuminati symbol, uh, Beyonce and uh, imaging shoving a microphone into it. So a double symbol uh, of sexual Congress going on and then people in the crowd getting up and doing it and Hitler coming up with the modern Olympics and the rings and the weird rituals there. And, and people say, oh, well, they're just having a ritual. They get off on it. I've been at Bohemian Grove. I've seen video shot by ABC News of Skull and Bones. They take this stuff deadly serious. I've talked to psychiatrists and people that have treated high-level folks. Obviously can't say because of the uh, the, the doctor-client uh, privilege, but I've 
I mean, they are about, I mean, I had dinner uh, with, and I looked the lady up with a famous person that worked for Princess Diana out in Hollywood one time at dinner at, at Martin Sheen's house of all places. And she was saying, let me just tell you, it's all true what you're saying and then some, okay? Let me just say it's crazy. And, and that's all she would say. Uh, but, I mean, these people are out of their minds. I mean, regardless whether it's real or not and spiritual, they believe it. And so what's going on with the rituals and the Super Bowl and stuff getting more and more overt and all the rappers saying they're in the Illuminati? Well, it's a couple of things, uh, 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 you know, we can talk about here. First of all, 80%, um, according to mainstream science anyway, 80% of the information that... Um, the, the brain constructs into our experience reality comes through the visual senses. Um, and thus, this is where symbolism comes from. This is why the, they put these symbols all around us, because, uh, see, I'm speaking now, and as I speak, my vocal cords are vibrating um, a waveform vibration field of information that's what that's what the voice is and it passes between uh, me and people listening to me now um, in in a form that's not words it is vibrational information the ear picks that up and it sends it to the brain and the brain then decodes that vibrational electrical information into words this is, this is the only time that 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 my uh, voice speaking now exists as words sure. is when the why are they doing the rituals though why yeah, do they think they get power yeah this is this is where i'm going with this now a visual um subject, whether it's a, a, a symbol or, or, or something on a stage or whatever, that's also an information field which carries the information that it represents. And therefore, that is going on the same journey except through the eyes this time to the brain to be decoded into um, a sense of reality. In other words, symbols through this mechanism are access gateways to the brain and the mind and the perception. Now when you do these rituals, and this is why they're doing ancient Babylonian and other rituals today that they've done for thousands of years and more, it's because the rituals, the colors, the chants, everything that, that takes, they takes part, the, the, the symbols involved, they create a particular vibrational field. And these fields connect them to these entities operating beyond the walls of the hack. And thus, as they create these rituals, and the Olympic ritual at the London uh, rituals at the London Olympics in 2012 were absolutely classically blatant in front of your eyes, if you know what you're looking for. Um, they are creating this um, uh, energy field that is connecting into these entities. Now, there's a great uh, line. Energy flows where attention goes. When you give something your attention, you make an energetic connection between you and it. That's why so they block all of I-35 and make all the news watch. It's, it's not about the dead soldier, about the state sucking our attention, our time, yes. our energy, our power. Yes, you know, you, you, you mentioned an experience you had uh, 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 on a, a chat we had some time ago, uh, Alex, where you were sitting, I think it was in a restaurant, and you said you felt like two eyes were staring you in the, in the back or, 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 you know, going in your back and you turned around and someone was staring at you. That attention of that person upon you, you could feel because that attention creates an energetic connection. So when we focus, and what was it, a billion people focusing on the opening ceremony of the London Olympics worldwide, and you get the, the Super Bowl audience, again worldwide, focusing on these rituals, there is an energetic connection, and we are affected by it. You mentioned how they want our eyes on them. They believe they're getting spiritual power. The globalists talk about this openly. Francois Mitterrand, the French president, and others were open occultists who talked about public events being rituals on TV to get power. Hitler called his giant mass rallies with 500,000 people rituals to get power. Here's an equation of 7.5 billion people on Earth, less than 1,000 members of elite families that own the planet. You're talking about 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So it's not the 2%. It's the 0. 0.0000000133333. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 
who are manipulating us. And not even all of those thousand or so members that Rothkop at the Kissinger Group estimates actually own the planet through monopoly. Some of them aren't even fully aware of what's going on. In fact, a lot of them are just compartmentalized. Now, here's Science Daily. Quantum theory demonstrated observation affects reality. This came out in 98. Since then, countless other research has been done proving that when you observe something, it changes it. Not when a computer does it. A human looking at something, they don't know why, changes the neurons and electrons and things. I mean, David, this just adds more validity to what you're saying what you, I guess, at a spiritual level, had an epiphany to 20-something years ago. But this is, is why you're saying that they want us looking at them? Yeah, well, the thing is um, that this is why, you know, they've found that different scientists can have different outcomes to different experiments, because depending on their attitude to the experiment, it can change the experiment. Now, this is so important. Uh, this, Alex, because you know, I, I was mentioning earlier, just before a break, that this program is playing out, and it will play out unless it's something, something intervenes in it. And, and what can intervene in it is human awareness, because human awareness looks at the program, in other words, its daily experience, and it changes it once it knows what it's looking at. And so this whole deal has been to hold human collective awareness or perception in a certain uh, way of looking and perceiving things so that it will not do on any scale what you've described in that article, which is the attention changing reality. Because if we look at this on anything like a mass scale, um, and we realize what we're looking at, gone. Because that attention and awareness behind the attention will change. And that's why they the stage matrix. the mass shootings and things, is again, they to get our to attention. Keep, yeah. They have to keep us in a certain band of attention. In other words, perception of reality, because then if that is our perception of reality, we will fear based attention that reality. Fear based attention focused on them. Let's jam in one call here. Exactly. William in Mississippi. William, you're on the air with David Ike. Go ahead. Hey, can you guys hear me? We can. Go ahead with your question. Mr. Ike, uh, hey, first off, I just wanted to say uh, I was lucky enough to grow up with a father who let me li uh, listen to your speeches a lot. And uh, when I was in school, one of our teachers kept calling you Mr. Icky, and I had to correct him in front of everybody. <laughs> I've but been called worse. I just I wanted to say that I think there's a lot of uh, correlations between your theories of the Anunnaki or the, rep the reptilian humanoids and uh, vampires. So let's assume that they, uh, an intelligent species of reptiles survived the extinction of the dinosaurs and evolved further. What, uh, what would be the uh, correlations between them and vampires? Well, let's just look well, at reptiles uh, and vampires. They both have two things, feed on mammals. They're both nocturnal. They're both described as cold. Like all right, well, I don't want to get off into it. you got to get your question in there, David. Thank you for the call, sir. Go ahead. Uh, cheers. Uh, very good question. And um, w w one of the things that happens when you research this in country after country and culture after country uh, uh, culture is that you the penny drops eventually. You're actually looking at the same thing. They're just using different names for it. This is why you can see the same thing described in all the religions. You Every see culture said whether it was Asian, Latin American, before that Mesoamerican, European, Babylonian, don't go near the castle. They'll grab you and eat you. Yeah, I mean, vampires, what uh, are called by the Gnostics archons, the, the jinn of Islam, the, the, the demons, the, uh, all these different uh, uh, names. So I've the called ancient Greeks the had vampire hunting parties yeah. that went out in their major cities every week. Yeah, now, what do vampires do? They feed off human blood and they feed off human energy and that's what these people behind the hack do and that is why their representatives within the hack do it and that is what Satanism is all about. Well, Christians call it the devil. You can call it whatever you want to call it, but the establishment believes all this, whether it's real or part of it's real or none of it's real. There's a lot more going on, on out there than meets the eye. David, when's your new book coming out? Uh, well, um, probably in the autumn, in the, in the fall. Um, All right. But uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's the best thing I've done because uh, there comes a time when you cross a line and suddenly the pennies drop. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. <laughs>